Hey guys, Joshua Miller here again with Brian Wilson for Project Warrior. Uh, today I'm going to cover a little bit uh, on how to get away from an opponent to get space so that you can go to your secondary tool. Uh, first off, we know in our profession that if I get down into a situation where I'm having to arrest somebody and they're resisting arrest, I got to make a choice. Do I want to go hands on with this person? And if I go hands on, can I control this person? Am I able to put this person down, put them in a controlling position, put handcuffs on them, and then from there affect, it, affect the arrest? Or maybe I get to the ground with somebody, I've been pushed down, something's happened, and this person has put me on the ground, they're in my guard, and I realize, man, I don't want to be here. This is a bad day for me. I might not have the skill set necessary to deal with this person in this environment. So what I want to do is I want to be able to gain some space, create that space, and I want to be able to disengage from that attacker and go to my secondary tool. So if I'm wearing a duty belt, could be a pepper spray, could be taser, could be baton, or maybe even pulling out my firearm with good strong verbal commands on all that to, to affect the arrest and put them in a cuffing position. Okay? So the technique we're going to cover today is called the hip drill retreat. It's something that's in our, our SSGT curriculum that we teach to all our area first responders. Uh, that was developed by Johnny Lee Smith. Uh, he's a great resource. Um, and so this is the hip drill retreat. And so what I'm doing today, if you'll notice, is I have my holster on. It's a Safari Line ALS, it's a single retention, which means I can pull on it. It's not going to come out until I hit, bam. If I had on my duty gear, I would have a triple retention holster on that had the hood as well as the, as well as the other release to get my firearm out in order to engage the suspect. So whenever that's happened, that can always affect your stuff. And if you're not currently training with your duty gear on, you need to put it on at least some point. You need to do all the techniques you've been taught so you can see how it's gonna work, how it reacts, because I promise you, when you put this duty gear on and you start doing these techniques, it changes up how you do stuff. And you're gonna have to work through some, some stuff you're gonna run into maybe you haven't thought of, all right? Just a personal tip for you. All right, so let's go to the hip to retreat and we'll uh, show you this, this technique as far as the attacker's in my guard, I'm gonna gain some space, use good verbal commands to put them in a cuffing position and go from there. Right. So we're on the mat. The first thing I need to know is I've made a decision not to be here, right? So I want to make sure I keep my head up, looking at my opponent. I want my hands in between me and the attacker, right? So if he's going to try to punch or strike, he has to cross this. I might get popped, I might not. Depends if I control this, what I can do, right? If I don't want to put my head on the, on the concrete because he hits it, there's nothing to stop that. I'm going to accept, I'm going to accept that full force of that blow. It's a real bad deal. Also, when I'm down here fighting, I want to avoid turning this hip up, because if I do, he has full access to my firearm or my weapon, and that's a bad day for me. So on this technique, what I want to do is I'll take my left leg, because I'm right-handed, so my firearm is on my right side, I'm going to drive with my right leg away from him to create some space, and I'm going to take this left leg, and I want to get it into his hip. Right? So I'm here with the, my attacker, and as he starts coming to attack, left leg drives, puts me up onto my, my right side. Now, he can't access my firearm. I can't either. But if neither of us has the firearm situation, it's okay, right? Now, I've got this in his hip. I've driven with this hand here, right? And I've got my hand still up protecting me. Now, he can try to close his distance if he wants to, but I can control him with his hip movement here. And now it's harder for him to hit me. I've got some space. Then as I can, I'm driving back, take my hand, I'm putting it on his head here, and I'm pushing the side of his head away. I don't want to push on top. I want to take his, his head, and I want to knock it out of alignment from his spine because that'll keep him from being able to bulldoze me over and allow me to get up. So as soon as I can, I push his head to the side, step through, I create space, lay down, 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 face down, hands behind your back. Use my good verbal command to control the suspect. All right, so let's review fast, earlier than what we just did, and then we'll go from there. Down here, attacker's here. I don't like this. Boom, I'm trying to create some space. I've got my space, and I still think it's safe to pop up. I'm here, disengage, and I go to my secondary tool, whether it's a firearm, a pepper spray, a uh, taser, I wrap my, my belt set up for my duty. Okay? All right, guys, simple technique, not too complicated. Drive, foot goes in the hip, create that space, disengage, go to your secondary tools. 
That way you can use that plus your good verbal commands to get away. Now remember, this if I'm with somebody and I realize, hey, I don't need to be on the ground. I'm not comfortable here. I'm not strong here. I need to be able to get up and get away to affect that arrest. Once again, guys, thanks for checking out this video. If you have any questions, email Forza. Looking forward to Project Warrior and all the good work we're doing here in the local community. If you haven't come to a class, come to a class, check us out. And as always, keep training. You could save your life one day. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.